Hi everybody. So we're going to do the next lesson using our large bead frame. So I have the large bead frame and I have the large bead frame paper. Again, this has been attached to the email. And let's get started. All right, so today we are going to multiply uh, 4,643 times 23. So up until this point, we've just been multiplying by single digits. But today, we are going to start multiplying with two digits or more. <clears throat> so you're also going to need a red colored pencil or pen. So we need to decompose our problem. And if you've been practicing your single digit multiplication with the large bead frame, you should remember how to do that. So I am going to start here. I'm going to decompose my multiplicand. Again, that's the top number. So I have three units. I'm going to write that on my units line. Four tens, six hundreds, and four thousands. So remember, I'm making my staircase. And I'm going to multiply these by our units. I'm decomposing for our units first. So I'm going to write times three. Okay. Now I have to decompose to multiply by my tens. So I have, I'm going to do the same thing, make my stairs. Three units, four tens, six hundreds, and four thousands. And how many tens do I have? Well, I have two, so that's the number 20. However, when we start thinking about three times 20, that can get a little bit jumbly in our brains. So I want to take a look at something really quick. I want to see if you can see what's happening here. Okay, so here I have some graph paper. What is 1 times 3? Well, that's 3. What is 10 times 3? That's 30. Uh, what's 1 times 4? Well, that's 4. That's 10 times 4. Well, that's 4 tenths. So that's 40. So if we look just at you know, the problems here, they almost have the same exact numbers, don't they? What's the, what's the extra number here? Well, we have a 0 here to make it a 10. Yeah, so we added a 0 when we were multiplying by 10. When we look at our answer, what's the difference between our answers? Well, just a zero. We pretty much just added that zero onto our first answer, and we got our answer. We see the same thing down here. Four times, or one times four is four, and ten times four is forty. We added a zero to this one to make the problem, so we just essentially had to add a zero to get our answer. It's kind of like when you see forty times two. So you can just think, all right, well, four times two is eight, and we can add a zero to that, and we get 80. This is similar to the work that we did in our geometric multiplication work. So um, if this is a little bit foreign to you, you might wanna go back and, and practice that, uh, but whenever you multiply something by 10, you just add a zero to your answer, and then you get it, okay? So let's see what we do to our problem and why that matters. So we're multiplying by a 10, aren't we? So essentially what we can do is we could just add a 10 or we can just add a zero to our answer or to each one of the numbers in our multiplicand. So to do that, I'm going to use a red pencil and I'm gonna write a red zero. And the first digit in my multiplicand is three. So I'm going to write 3 there. So the 3 units becomes a 30. And the 40 becomes a 400. The 600 becomes a 6,000. And the 4,000 becomes a 40,000. Okay? And since we moved this 0 to here, we don't need it anymore. 
we can just multiply it by two. So we actually, we don't need this. We just need to focus here. And you're gonna see why this is so important once we start our multiplication. So here we go. Now we multiply just like we've been doing in all of our practice with single digit multiplication using the large bead frame. We're gonna come here and say three times three. Well, that's nine. And that's on the units wire, so we're gonna put nine. Then we can do three times four. What is three times four? That's 12. So we need 12 tenths because this four is on the tens line. Remember how to make 12? Good. If that's confusing to you, you need to go back and practice some of the earlier lessons because putting 12 like that is the same thing as going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? That's really important. Okay, so 3 times 6 is 18. This is on the hundreds line, so we need to make 18 of these. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's our 18. We bring it over. Remember, we're not counting this guy. He was part of our 12. And lastly, the 3 times 4. Again, that was 12, and it's <clears throat> on the thousands line, so we're going to use the thousands wire. 12. There we go. So we have finished multiplying everything by the units. And I know we've talked before about the fact that the answer to a multiplication problem is called a product because we're making a number by using multiplication of two different numbers. So so we have partial answer. We have part of our answer. So we call that our partial product. We have our first partial product. So I'm going to write that first partial product over here under our problem. How many units do I have? Nine. How many tens? Two. How many hundreds? Nine. How many thousands? Three. And finally, how many ten thousands? One. Cool. Now we're going to multiply everything by our two. So we start here at the top, just like we did before, 2 times 3. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. However, this 3 is on what line? Tens. It's not on the units line, is it? We have a red, we have a red 0 on the units line. It's on the tens, so we need 6 tens. All right? 2 times 4 is what? That's 8, and that's on the hundreds line. Cool, cool, cool. 2 times 6 is what? It's 12, and that's on the thousands line. We need 12 of these. 1, 10, 2 units. 2 times 4 is what? 8. That's on our 10,000 line. So we're going to come over here to our 10,000s wire and bring over 8. So there, we have our second partial product. So I'm going to write that down just like I did the other one over here on our answer. But watch out, because how many units do you have? You have zero. So you need to write zero on that line. Don't start writing your tens on that line. You won't get the right answer. Got to make sure that you're writing whatever's on the, the wire on the corresponding line on your paper. So we have six tens. I'm going to put six on my tens line. Eight hundreds. I'm going to put eight on my hundreds line. Two thousands, and then nine ten thousands. We have these two partial products, and to, since they are each part of the answer, we're going to add them together to get the full answer. So nine plus zero is nine. Two plus six is eight. Nine plus eight is seventeen. We put the seven here. Now we're just focusing on our partial products, not this stuff right now. So the seven's not going to go up here, or the one from the 17, the 10 from the 17 is not going to go up there. It's going to go here by the three, since we're just adding these two. So one plus three is two, sorry, one plus three is four, plus two is six, then one plus nine is 10. So our answer is 106,789. Okay, let's do another one real quick. I'm going to make my simple design. Reset my frame, and we are going to do 
6,934 times 32. All right. So we're going to decompose our numbers just like we did before. So I'm going to decompose my multiple cans, multiply by my units. So I have four units, three tens, nine hundreds, six thousands. So we're going to multiply our units, and that's two. Now we don't have to write this one up here. This one here where I cross it out, that's only the first time that I show the lesson. So don't write that guy. It wastes your paper. It wastes room. You can just come right down here to adding your red zeros. So since our next place is tens, we're going to add one red zero to each number in our multiple hand. So one red zero there. The four becomes a 40. Red zero here. The 30 becomes a 300. One red zero here. 900 becomes a 9,000. And one red zero here. The 6,000 becomes a 60,000. All right, so we're ready to multiply. So here we go, we come up here, we multiply these just like we've been doing the whole time. Two times four is what? Eight, this is on the units line, put it on the units wire. Two times three, six, the three is on the tens wire, so we're gonna put our answer on the tens wire. Two times nine, it's 18. The nine is on the hundreds wire. So we need 18 hundreds. Yeah. Two times six, that's 12. And the six is on the thousands line, so we need to use the thousands wire. There we go. All right, so we have our first partial product. We are done multiplying by our units. So I'm gonna write that partial product down. We have eight units, six tens, eight hundreds, three thousands, and one ten thousand. All right, now we're ready to multiply down here. Oops, and we're multiplying this by three. It's not 30, remember, because we already put that zero at the end of all of these. So we come down and we're going to multiply, just like we've been doing. Three times four is what? Twelve. But again, what line is this four on? It's on the tens wire, so we need 12 tens. This is why decomposing is so important. It lets you know where you need to put your answers on your bead frame. Three times three, that's nine. And this is on the hundreds wire, or hundreds line, so we need to use the hundredth wire. Here's nine hundreds. But when we bring it over, what's the deal? We used all of them. We have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. 10 of these is equivalent to 1,000, so we need to exchange. Can't ever have this be empty over here. Now we need to do three times nine. What is three times nine? Good, 27. So this is on the thousand line, so we need 27 thousand. So two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 27. There we go. And then three times six is 18. This is on the 10,000s wire, so we need to come down here to the 10,000s wire and do 18. One, eight, one, eight, 18, bring it over. But look, look what's happened again. We're out, we ran out over here. We can't have all 10 over here because this is 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, 90,000, 100,000. So we have to exchange these 10 10,000s ten for 100,000, okay? So let's write down our answer. So we're going to do the same thing we did before again, but we have to write down exactly what's on our frame, exactly on the paper. So how many units do I have? Zero. We have to write the number that corresponds with the wire. How many tens? Two. How many hundreds? Zero again. How many units of thousands? Eight. How many ten thousands? Zero. Again. And how many hundred thousands, two. So we have our two partial products. We want to put them together to find the final product or the final answer. So we're going to add them. Eight plus zero is eight. 
6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 0 is 8. 3 plus 8 is 11. Put the 1 there. Carry. 1 plus 1 is 2. And well, there's nothing above here, so that's like a 0. So 2 plus nothing is 2. So 6,934 times 32 equals 221,888. Okay, now if you were multiplying something by 332, let me show you what that would look like. So if you did 2, 4, 6, 8 times 342, I'm not going to do this problem with you, I'm just going to decompose it. We'd have to decompose to multiply by our units, our tenths, and our hundreds. So we would have 8, 60, 400, 2,000 times our unit, which is 2. And then we would have to add a red 0 to each place in our multiple canned. 8, 6, 4, 2,000. We're multiplying by 4. Now, here's 100. This is 1. Let's see. Can you see that? Yeah. This is 10. This is 100. When we multiplied by 10, we added how many zeros? 1. We multiply 100. How many zeros do you think we need to add? 2. So we'd have to do two red zeros. Oops. That was way too many. I, I didn't need this row. Sorry. So 8. 60, 400. So look at that. Isn't that wild? That's going to give us a great, great big number, isn't it? So when we multiply these by 3, we do 3 times 8. What is 3 times 8? That's well, 24, but this 8 is on what line? The hundreds line. So 24. This is zero on these two lines, okay? Uh, if we multiplied by 1,000, say we did that, 2,468 times 3,342, how many zeros would we have to add? We have to add three. See, so then it would be 8, 40, nope, sorry, 60, 400, something like that. This would be times 3. Isn't that wild? But that's how you do digits more than two digit multipliers. Depending on how many digits are in your multiplier, that's going to tell you how many zeros you need to add. Okay? All right. You know what? If you want to try this problem after some practice and you want to tell me what answer you get, email me. Let me know what you get. Okay? I'd be curious. All right, guys. Thanks so much for all of your time. Seriously, if you need me, call me. I'm happy to set up a Zoom time with you to help walk you through this. We can do a couple problems together. Sometimes it's just, you know, repetition with somebody who can really answer your questions and, you know, knows how to do it. All right. I miss you. I adore you. And I'll see you later.